خصائص النبوة is those aspects that are unique to our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Nobody else has them. Of the خصائص number one, Allah has said to him, "You don't need any protection. I will protect you." والله يعصمك من الناس. It is said in Sunan al-Tirmidhi that the Sahaba would volunteer to bodyguard the Prophet in Mecca. When Allah revealed this verse, the Prophet lifted his curtain, his house, and there was Abu Ayyub and others standing. And he said to them, don't worry, Allah has said he will protect me. I don't need you anymore. No need to volunteer as bodyguards. So the Prophet has been divinely protected in that nobody can kill him. Allah will protect him. And throughout the seerah, he was physically harmed. He was pushed. Astaghfirullah, people spat on him. The Quraysh threw the animal on him. He was hurt. But any time somebody actually tried to kill him, what happened? Miracle. And there's at least four or five assassination attempts every single time unscathed. Not a hair on his head touched when the assassination attempt was done. Another khas thing is that the Prophet's shaitan embraced Islam. Qareen. You know, everyone's born in a shaitan qareen, right? When they asked, Ya Rasulullah, you also have a qareen? He goes, yes, I have a qareen too. But my qareen embraced Islam. Another thing khas for him, for our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is that because the shayateen cannot imitate him, whoever sees him in a dream has seen him as if in real. No shaitan can pretend to be him. Whereas if you see see anybody else maybe you saw that person maybe it's your imagination you didn't actually see him or maybe it's sakhfirullah impersonation not for the prophet sallallahu another khas for the prophet sallallahu you're not allowed to call him by his name or his kunya allah says in the quran la taj'alu du'a'a rasuli bainakum ka du'a'i ba'dikum ba'da don't call the prophet sallallahu like you call each other so it is not allowed for any muslim to say astaghfirullah in front of his face ya muhammad or ya abu al-qasim not allowed we say, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Nabi Allah. We call him by his title. Another khas of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the status of our mothers. So he was allowed more than any other person is allowed. Those wives, they have a special status of hijab. They have a special status of idda. They have a special status of not getting married. So overall, our mothers have a special khas that no one else has. Another khasais of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that no other person has is that the angel of death has to ask permission to take take his life. Another khasais is that he will be buried where he passes away. Another khasais is the earth will not eat his body. What is unique to him that no other prophet before him was given? Allah promised to protect his revelation. The Quran is protected cover to cover. The Quran is preserved beginning to end. As for other books, Allah did not promise to protect them. And Allah says in the Quran, the rabbis and the priests, they were the ones who attempted to protect the book that Allah gave them and they failed. Another khasiyah given to him is that the Quran itself, we can say, has many unique things and there are many ahadith under this. So for example, the Prophet said that Surah Al-Fatiha has not been given to any other prophet. There's nothing like Surah Al-Fatiha. For example, the Prophet said that Khawatim Surah Al-Baqarah is coming straight from the Arsh of Rahman and no other revelation has Khawatim Surah Al-Baqarah. For example, the Prophet said that I have been given the seven long surahs instead of the Torah and I have been given the Mi'in surahs instead of the Zabur and I have been given the Mathani instead of the Injil and I have been preferred with the Mufassal. This is a deep hadith here. In other words, in the Quran you have the Torah, Zabur, Injil. Of the specialities given to him is that he is obviously Khatimul Anbiya. Of the specialities given to him is that he has been sent to Jinn and Ins. No prophet has been sent to both of them. Of the Khasiyah given to him is that he has been called Rahmatan lil alameen and no prophet before him has been called Rahmatan lil alameen. Of the specialities he has been blessed with and no other prophet is that Allah allowed all of the prophets to meet because of him. Never before has this occurred. And that is of course in Isra al-Mi'raj. And the Prophet then led them in salah. This is a khasiyah that there is no comparison with any other prophet. And that's why we call him Imam al -Mur. He is the Imam of all of the Rusul. How can this not be a khasiyah given to him? The Prophet said, I shall be the first person that the earth will cleft asunder and be resurrected. The first qabr to be cracked open and the first person to come up, it shall be me. So judgment day 
will begin with the resurrection of the Prophet ﷺ. Of the specialities given to him, the Prophet ﷺ said that on that day, Allah will hand me the flag for mankind. So it appears that species will be resurrected and there will be a representative for every species. And our Prophet ﷺ will be holding the flag of praise, liwa alhamd. He is representing mankind. Allah will give him that flag. Of the khasiya specialities on that day, as we know from the hadith, that all of mankind will be so worried. They're going to hunt for somebody to beg Allah to get the Day of Judgment over with. Let's just start and get it done with. And they're going to go to all the Prophets. Eventually, they will go to the Prophet wasallam, And this is called Maqam al-Mahmud. One person shall signal the request to begin actual judgment. And that will be our Prophet wasallam. The Maqam al-Mahmud is one person will ask Allah, beg Allah to start the Day of Judgment. To begin it all because people are getting worried and people are getting very panicked and whatnot. So they're going to make shafa'a to Adam, to Nuh, to Ibrahim, to Musa, to Isa. Each one will say, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it until they come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the Maqam Al-Mahmud. He said, I will go to the throne of Allah and I will prostrate in front of the throne. And that will be the initiation of the Hisab. When the Prophet lifts his head, then the Mizan will come down. Then the scales will come and the actual Hisab will begin. This is unique only to him. Of the khasiyah given to him is that he shall be the first to cross over the sirat. When Anas ibn Malik said, Ya Rasulullah, on the day of judgment, there's going to be so many people, how will I find you? Look where his mind is going. He was just a kid at the time. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you will find me at the hawd. Every Prophet is given a hawd. But our Prophet ﷺ will have the largest hawd. He told Anas, you will find me at the hawd. He goes, what if I don't find you there? He goes, then I'll be waiting for you at the sirat, making dua for my ummah as they cross over. And he shall be the first to cross over the Sirat and he will stop there waiting for the rest of his Ummah to come. So this is a khasiyah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can add here, the Hawd is not unique, but the water in the Hawd of the Prophet Sallallahu where will it come from? Al-Kawthar. And Al-Kawthar is one of his unique blessings. One of the khasiyah of the Prophet Sallallahu Inna a'taynaka Al-Kawthar. And what is Al-Kawthar? Al-Kawthar is the primary river and tributary of Jannah. One of the last things that were mentioned here, the khasi of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, I shall be the first to knock on the doors of Jannah. And I shall be the first because of whom the doors are open. And then he said, and I will be the first person to enter Jannah out of all of mankind will be our Prophet ﷺ. That is without a doubt a khasiyah to him. And then of course the final khasiyah that we mentioned and without a doubt the greatest one of all, it is Al-Wasila. What is the Wasila? Our Prophet ﷺ said, Wasila is one entire level of Jannah. And it is A'la al-Jannah. And it is A'la al-Firdaus. And it is underneath the throne of Ar-Rahman. And it's an entire level. A whole floor or a whole earth if you like. And it is meant for one person. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, I hope I am that person. And of course, we know he is that person because there is nobody else that is going to get the wasila in his modesty. He said, I hope I am that person. But in reality, we know it is him. And that's why we make dua for him to get the wasila, the highest level of Jannah, which is above everybody else. Every khasa is giving to him. It is also a blessing for us because we are his ummah. So when he is raised, then if if we love him and if we attach ourselves to him, we will also be raised. So love the Prophet ﷺ. Follow as much as you can of his instructions and sunnah. Perchance, insha'Allah ta'ala, his blessings will trickle down no matter how small to me and you. And that is going to be more than enough for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us with the Prophet ﷺ. May he allow us to drink from the hawd. May he allow us to be sheltered under the shade of Allah. May he allow us to have the shafa'a of the Prophet ﷺ and be with him in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. 